so what i was saying from the previous class as well that we will be having beams of different cross sections and most important are the beams of this cross section and this cross section beam is called the beam of i section these are called i section beams okay so we can clearly say that as far as this beam is concerned this is an i section beam okay this beam for us is an i section beam okay now look into yes. this i section beam as far as this i section beam is concerned why this is called i section because it is having one part is like this another part is like this okay and another part is like this it's have its configuration is in the shape of i that's why this is called an i section beam now let's suppose in the previous problem like you had a problem like this previous problem wherein we had say for example we had a beam we were given we we had to find out the maximum shear stress we had or we had to find the shear stress at any cross section at any given cross section of the beam now let at given to us was that this beam cross section is an t cross section beam okay maybe sometimes we have a beam maybe we have a beam which is not in the form of t but, but which is essentially in the form of an i section okay if this problem we have to do on the i section beam okay for example we have an i section beam how we uh, solve this problem for an i section beam that is for example as is given in this question we have a beam of i cross section okay we have a beam of i cross section now this i cross section beam is subjected to a shear force of 80 kN that is to this i cross section beam we are subjecting a load of 80 kN plot the shear stress distribution across the cross across the beams cross section that is we have to plot how the shear stress is varying across this cross section what is the value of shear stress here what is the value of shear stress here 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 so as you are moving above the neutral axis or or you are going below the neutral axis how does this shear stress vary this is the question okay so this is the question for us that how does the shear stress vary as you are moving across this cross section okay now the cross section that essentially we have is in the form of an i cross section now in order to solve this problem the first and foremost thing that we will be doing we first of all write the formula we know that shear stress in a beam is given by v q divided by i into t okay we will be applying this formula to this section and obtaining how tau varies in the top section we will be applying this formula to this middle section and we will see how this tau varies in the middle section and then we apply this formula on the lowermost section and see how this tau varies in the lowermost we will be applying this formula on this section on on this part of the section on this part of the section and the lower part of this section now see as far as these parts are concerned uh, as far as these parts are concerned that we will be using this part is called this is called flange okay we say this is flange okay this is called flange and this lower part is also known as flange okay so this i section beam is having how many flanks it is having two flanks okay mm -hmm. it is this is called flange this is also called flange in between these two flanks this portion is called as web okay so this is our web okay so if we are asked as far as an i section beam is concerned we can say that in an i section beam we have two flanks and we are having a web okay so web and the flanks we will in order to solve or in order to find how this tau varies across this cross section along the neutral axis uh, sorry above and below the neutral axis will be using this formula on this flange will be using this formula for this flange and then we'll be using this formula for this web okay so how we use this formula what we'll be doing what we will do first of all first and foremost thing see as far as i is concerned i is the moment of inertia of this total i section beam 
okay about the neutral axis so first and foremost this procedure i have been repeating from many lectures that first of all you write down the formula okay first of all write down the formula okay the formula for the shear flow is tau is equal to vq divided by it now this will be your step number one and step number two will be after writing the formula for tau take step number two and step number two will be uh, find the neutral axis okay find the neutral axis of the beam now look at this i section beam okay if you look at this i section beam i have always been saying since we have also derived it that neutral axis is an axis is in uh, neutral axis is the centroidal axis okay for prismatic beams the neutral axis happens to be one of the centroidal centroidal axis are you getting me or not we have already derived this that neutral axis is one of the centroidal axis so for step number two is finding the neutral axis so we can find the neutral axis once we locate the centroid of this i section beam where will be the where will be the uh, where is the centroid of this i section beam this is very easy to uh, guess you know why because if you draw an axis like this if you draw an axis on this beam if you draw an axis like this if you happen to draw an axis on the beam like this okay and you draw one more axis on the beam like this then this axis as well as this axis happens to be the axis of symmetry this is axis of symmetry and that one is also the axis of symmetry okay both are the axis of symmetries okay so i mean to say if we okay look at this axis this is one of the axis of symmetry because it divides this cross section into two symmetrical parts the upper part and the lower part and if you draw one more axis if you draw one more axis through the center of this web if you draw an axis through the center of the web then that axis is also the axis of symmetry because it divides your beam into two symmetrical parts this part and this part so if you it means as far as the centroid is concerned centroid lies at the we know that centroid lies at the point of intersection of the point of intersection of centroid lies at the point of intersection of the axis of symmetry okay so it means if you look at this point okay which is the middle point or the midpoint of this entire cross section i cross section the middle point of this i cross section this is the point where the centroid lies because this is the point where your two axis of symmetries are crossing one axis of symmetry is like this another axis of symmetry is like this so centroid is somewhere some centroid is at the uh, centroid is at the center okay now draw a line draw a line through the centroid you will be calling that axis as the neutral axis that's what has been done in this case okay so as far as this line is concerned this line is the neutral axis okay so it means the first and foremost point for us was the location of the neutral axis okay so again as far as this formula is concerned this formula gives us now what it gives us the total moment of inertia total moment of inertia of this i section about the neutral axis so this is the total moment of inertia of this i section about the neutral axis and this has been used with the this has been this moment of inertia of the i section is calculated using the parallel axis using the parallel axis shown so this has been done using the parallel axis so now the formula for the shear stress is tau is equal to vq divided by i into t okay so what we do the value of v is given to us the value of i is also known to us now what we do we will be applying this formula first of all let's apply this formula on the top flange and see how tau varies how tau varies with distance from the neutral axis for the top flange 
then we apply the same formula for this web section then we apply th this formula for the lower portion of the web or for the lowermost flange and we get the total variation of tau total variation of shear stress across the surface what i mean to say is that is let's take this let's take this top flange into consideration first as far as the top flange is concerned we can write it let me draw the top flange portion here as far as the top flange is concerned so we have it is somewhat like this this is our i section beam okay now as far as the dimensions are concerned as first our neutral axis our neutral axis is here let this to be our neutral axis let's say this is our neutral axis and the dimensions are that this distance for us is 20 mm this is 20 mm i'm writing all dimensions in 20 mm this distance is equal to 100 mm this is 100 mm and this thickness is given to us as 15 mm okay this is 15 mm okay now first of all we have to apply the formula tau is equal to vq divided by i into t we are applying this formula on the upper flange okay that is the question that is in front of us that is the upper flange this is the upper flange okay now uh, what we do in order to apply this formula we know the value of v is given to us the value of i we already know now we have to first of all find the value of q and this value of q we have to find for the upper flange okay if you look at the upper flange this dimension of the upper flange is equal to 300 mm okay this is given to us this is 300 mm okay so we are applying this formula on the top flange so it means the width of this flange is equal to 300 mm that indicates the value of the t that we have to take the thickness of the element is 300 mm okay 300 mm just repeat it just recall what we have done when we had an when we had a cross section of the beam was in the form of a rectangle okay when we applied the formula tau is vq divided by it at that time the value of t for us was equal to b this is equal to the width of your element okay now as far as when we are applying this this formula on the top flange as far as the width of the element is concerned the width of the element is equal to 300 mm so we know for the top flange the value of t is 300 mm now we know the value of v for the top flange we know the value of i is the total moment of inertia about the neutral axis the value of t is 300 mm now we are left with the value of q how do we find the value of the q for the for the uh, for the top flange we know as far as the value of q is concerned we know q is equal to a prime Y yes y prime or y prime bar we write it y prime bar now as far as the a prime is concerned a prime represents what it represents area. yes it represents the area under investigation okay now the area that is under investigation the area for which we are applying this formula is the top area isn't a top flange as as far as the area is concerned area for this flange is how much it is 300 multiplied by 20 that is 300 mm that is 0 0.3 meter multiplied by 20 mm that is 0 0.02 meter okay so this is our a prime okay so our a prime is this much now we have to know what is the value of this y prime as far as the y prime is concerned y prime represents the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of the a prime where is the centroid of the a prime as far as the a prime is concerned the a prime is in the form of a rectangle it is centroid will be at the geometrical center now y prime bar is the distance of this centroid from the neutral axis where is it so as you go in this direction okay it will be this distance that is 100 mm 
plus distance from here to here that is how much 10 mm are you getting 10. me or not so how much will be y prime bar the y prime bar will be equal to y prime bar will be equal to uh, 110 mm that is 0 0.110 meter are you getting me or not so this is our y prime bar now since we know since we know the value of our since we know the value of our a prime y prime bar therefore can't we find the value of q okay a prime into y prime bar since we know the value of q now we know the value of v we know the value of i we know the value of t substitute the value of v q i and t in this formula obtain the value of obtain the value of t are you getting me or not so look here this is what has been this is what has been done here this is uh, here it has been done now he has done it here look how the book has solved it book has solved it here so v is equal to 80 kilonewton that is 80 into 10 is power 3 newton as far as qb is concerned that is equal to 0 0.660 which you can calculate from the formulas okay so this is the value of your q q and i we have already calculated and thickness is here and if when you substitute all these values that you have already obtained you get the value of tau is equal to how much tau is equal to 1.13 megapascal where is the value of this tau equal to 1.13 megapascal i have been repeatedly telling you that this is at the base of the area that is that is here all along all along the base of the top flange okay the value of the shear stress is how much the value of the shear stress is 1.13 megapascal this is how we calculated the shear stress at this position of this flange now we will apply the formula to calculate the shear stress in this web then we'll apply the same formula to calculate the shear stress in this flange which may be uh, which will be which will be doing in the next class